Hey guys, here are your photosynthesis video notes. So we're going to outline the process here and you'll have a couple of great illustrations to help you as well. So first of all, we know that light is required for photosynthesis, as you can see in this picture here, and it goes into something called the Kelvin cycle, where we ultimately produce sugar in the form of glucose. So what is photosynthesis? So it's a process that takes place in the chloroplast, which is an organelle found only in plant cells. It uses energy from the sun, or if you have an indoor plant, artificial light, and it converts water and carbon dioxide into oxygen and carbohydrates in the form of sugar. So a little bit about the chloroplast. So it's green, right? But it absorbs red and blue light and reflects green light. This is due to something called chlorophyll A, and this is why the chloroplast is green in color. As you can see, the chloroplast also has two membranes, so it has an inner and an outer membrane, and then we have a granum, thylakoid, and stroma, which are the parts of the interior that are really important to the process of photosynthesis. Some plants also have accessory pigments. So these are things like chlorophyll B, xanthophylls, and carotenoids. And if you look at this diagram here, you'll see we have things like rhodoxin, which reflects red light, xanthophyll, which reflects yellow, and carotene, which reflects orange. And these are why certain plant parts sometimes have different colors, because of these pigments. So the big picture, so what is going in to a plant? So we have CO2, and we also have H2O, and lastly, come over here, don't forget about the sun or a light source. And what's going out? We have O2, and the really important one, C6, H12, O6. So let's take a look at that formula. So we're gonna write it out here. So we know that carbon dioxide and water come into the plant. So if it's balanced, it's six CO2 plus six H2O yields, and coming into here is usually sun or light, and we get six O2 plus C6 H12 O6. So that is the balanced formula for photosynthesis. You must memorize this. So there's two major parts of photosynthesis. So there's something called the light dependent reaction and the light independent reaction. The light dependent reaction is where oxygen is produced, but that's only a byproduct of this process. It's also where ADP is converted into ATP, which is a big energy source for the light independent. So the light independent uses this ATP to produce sugar or glucose from carbon dioxide and what was coming from the light dependent reaction. The light independent reaction is also where the Kelvin cycle takes place. So let's talk a little bit about ATP first. So ATP is adenine triphosphate. So this is adenine, a ribose, and then three phosphates, hence the tri, which is ATP. This stores energy but it's only very quick for a few minutes, and it's the source of all energy for the cell. When one of those phosphate groups breaks off, it becomes ADP, and that's when that energy is released. So ADP is adenine diphosphate, meaning two. So this is adenine ribose and two phosphates. So this is what happens when ATP is used for energy, that phosphate breaks off. And then the phosphate can be added back later through a separate reaction, which creates more ATP for the cell. So let's talk about the first step, the light dependent reactions. So there's an order of processes that happens, and this happens in the thylakoid. So light is going to strike the chloroplast and hit the chlorophyll, which is located in the thylakoid. Water then enters the chloroplast, and then oxygen is given off where it exits. Oxygen is a byproduct. There tends to be a misconception that plants produce oxygen as their main product because we kind of see that from a selfish point of view in terms of that's what we need, but oxygen is just a byproduct of this process. And also, during light dependent, you have NADPH and ATP that are made, and these are going to help power the light independent reactions. So here's a look at the two photosystems that are in the light reactions, and these are actually in the thylakoid membrane, and we'll take a closer look at these in class. But you have a water-splitting photosystem and an NADPH-producing photosystem, and this cute little picture here shows people as if they were the photons and the electrons that are getting energy as they move through the stages. So let's talk about those electron transport chains. 
So together, both of these photosystems collect photons of light and they transfer this energy to the electrons of chlorophyll. Now these electrons get excited and they're passed from the primary electron acceptor to these electron transport chains. So this energy is what ends up in ATP and NADPH. So if we look at something called non-cyclic phosphorylation, nice long word for you. So this is when photosystem two, which is just one of the two that are in the process, this splits water to regain electrons, and this is where that O2 is released. So if we look at this picture here, oops, it shows the primary electron acceptor here, shows those electrons, so anytime you see E minus, that's an electron. They go through the electron transport chain, then onto photosystem one, where you have more electron transports, and then ultimately, that's where we get our NADPH through this process. So chemiosmosis, this is when the electron transport chains and photosystems are arranged together. So they're located, like I said, in the thylakoid membrane and they pump hydrogen ions through that membrane. If you look, hydrogen ions are H+, so those are going to be constantly moving across the membranes. And this flow is what's collected by something called ATP synthase and that's what makes all that ATP that the cell needs for energy. These H+, because they have a positive charge, also combine with NADP+, and that's where we form NADPH as well. So let's look at how those are generated. So for step one, we have the water splitting. You have light that comes in here. It goes to that primary electron acceptor. Step two, you're going to go through this electron transport chain, and this is gonna make some ATP. Then step three, Loads. There we go. So this is your NADPH producing system and light's also coming in here. And this is where they get excited and go to the, st the state where they produce NADPH. So let's talk about those light independent reactions. So the light independent reactions, the order, is NADPH and ATP move from the thylakoid to the stroma. These are what help power the reaction. Carbon dioxide is also going to enter here. And glucose is what's ultimately made out of the Kelvin cycle. So let's look at the Kelvin cycle. So this is what we just talked about. Carbon from CO2 is converted to glucose, and then ATP and NADPH power the reaction. So you can see ATP coming in here, NADPH coming in there, more ATP coming in here. So that's what's causing all of that energy to help run this process. And there's a lot of threes, one threes, threes, those are more technical terms that you'll discuss later in classes, but you just need to know the basics of the cycle, which we'll talk about in a minute. So CO2 is added. We know this, right? So it's added to a 5C or 5-carbon five sugar called RUBP. This becomes unstable because now it's a 6-carbon compound and it doesn't really like to exist that way. So it splits into two molecules of something called PGA. That is ultimately converted to form glucose. Two of them bond to form glucose. It requires three turns, though, of the Kelvin cycle. So it's not just a one time around and it makes the glucose. It requires three turns. And also important to note that there's six total CO2 molecules that are required to produce just one molecule of C6H12O6 or glucose. So here's just a final kind of culminating picture for you. So anytime you see a green arrow in this picture, if you look up here, that means it's something that's moving in to the chloroplast. And then when you see a red arrow, it's something moving out. So if we look, what's moving in? We have light in the form of sun here, water and CO2. And then what's moving out is oxygen. And important to remember, oxygen is a byproduct. And then glucose. And this is the whole purpose of photosynthesis, is to produce glucose, to feed the plant. The plant needs food. That's how it gets its food. It also shows a little bit of a basic breakdown of the NADPH and the ATP and how that transports between the two different reactions. So we have light dependent is on this side and light independence on that side. And then of course you see the Kelvin cycle. And finally we have the ADP and the ATP which needs that energy. It's gonna go back to this reaction and go back into the light dependent using energy from the sun to process it. And that is all for your notes.